So now we're on page 51 and we're going to learn the piece Tumbao. So let's talk about what a Tumbao is. So Tumbao is a rhythmic pattern that's played in salsa music. There's many different patterns. This is one common one that you will often hear the bass playing. So if you take a look at it, we're going to hit three times in the measure. We're going to hit on the downbeat of one, the and of two, and then the downbeat of four. Now you'll notice the way that I wrote it is a little bit interesting. We have a dotted quarter note on beat one, which gets one and a half beats. Then we have an eighth note tied to a quarter note, which also gets one and a half beats, right? And then we have a quarter note on the downbeat of four. Now let's talk about why I wrote it that way. Because a dotted quarter note is the exact same thing as an eighth note tied to a quarter note. They each get one and a half beats. You'll see when I write it with the two dotted quarter notes back to back, it's a little bit harder to see where beat three is. Can you see that? When I write it with the dotted quarter note and then the eighth note tied to the quarter note, you can clearly see where beats one, three, and four are. Now, how we feel that, a good way to feel it, or a good way to warm up to it, is to count all the eighth notes, right? Because then you've got a clear grid and it's very easy to know where to hit. So if I count one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and, then it's easy to feel it, okay? But it's gonna take you a while to get this rhythm under your fingers, right? So practice with the metronome and just do it with mute strums. And then when you're ready, you can try the actual pattern that's written here in the first system. So let's talk about the piece Tumbao and let's go over the form itself. So if you take a look at Tumbao, take an overview, we've got four systems of music. We have a first and second ending. We're in common time. We have the eighth note rests. And then we also have a specified fingering in the very last measure there where I have written the number two over the note D. Let's take a look at the first system and let's say the notes there. The rest of the piece is fairly easy in that it just uses notes on the B and E string. I don't think you'll have a problem reading it, but let's go through the first system. So it's going to go D, F, A, A, C, E. And then it measures three and four is the same thing. For those of you that know theory, that's just outlining a D minor chord and an A minor chord, right? It's an arpeggiating it in the bass. So that's the first system. Okay, so now let's take a look at the second system. First thing is that we have the eighth note rest there. We have eighth note rests on measure five, measure seven, measure nine, 10, 11, and then 13 as well. So for all of those measures, we're gonna count it as one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So I'm playing all the eighth notes except for beat one. So you come in on the and of one. That's the way we count those, right? The only other measures then we have are whole notes. So it's quite easy. Don't forget how the repeats work. Of course, hopefully you all have this down by now, but let me walk you through it. You start at the first measure, go down to measure 12, take the repeat back to the top of the piece, and then you play to the first ending. When you get to measure 11, you don't play 11 or 12, they've vanished, and then you move on to 13 and 14, and then you end. Let's talk about measure 14 and why I have that alternate fingering of the second finger there specified on the note D. It's the same concept we've been running into on the piece Carnival, on Countrified, and on three play. That D to G, right? The third fret on both the B string and the high E string. And having to, you know, get to those notes quickly without it sounding staccato or having a slight separation between those notes. So what I wrote here was to go. You see how it just flows nicely. It just goes third finger to second finger. If you prefer to do it with the three, four, like we did in the other pieces, you're welcome to. I don't like it as much. If you want to bar it, that's an option as well, but I don't like that either. So for me, what feels the most comfortable is to use my second finger on that note D. So just one more thing I want to mention for those of you that are playing without a pick, that you're playing with the classical style technique. For this piece, I like to use a thumb rest stroke. So the thumb rest stroke moves in the opposite direction of a rest stroke that we do with our index and middle, right? When we play with our index and middle, or our A finger, we're coming from a string higher and resting on the string below, right? When we do the thumb rest stroke, it's the opposite. We're hitting on a lower string and landing on the string above. Now, when I use the thumb rest stroke, I pivot my hand a little bit away from that classical technique. Remember I said never put your thumb out 
behind your fingers, don't put your fingers in front of your thumb. For the flamenco thumb technique, or to get that kind of bite, I do do that. Okay, so it just gives you a nice percussive kind of attack when you turn your hand a little bit like this. Okay, so when I play that flamenco thumb thing. very different than what I advised in the other video about right hand technique. So explore that if you'd like. Of course you can do it with a pick. You could play it softer if you'd like and not do the thumb technique and just go like this also. But it does sound better with the rest stroke. So let me play the melody for you now. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I do want to show for advanced people, this is optional, but uh, for more advanced people, you may have noticed that I was playing the bass line for the tumbao with some chords mixed in. So check it out, this is optional. Instead of playing our D minor with 2 3 1, like we normally do, like I showed you for a cancion, you can play it with 2 4 1, and then that frees up your third finger so that you can actually play the tumbao pattern in the bass with the chord on top. So you can go. It's from the D minor, then you hit your F and your A, or you can arpeggiate it. You can go. You can arpeggiate it going up, like I just did, or arpeggiate it going down. On the A minor, just grab it as you normally do, and your pinky is free to play the bass line with the chord on top. So same thing. Or, or. So that's optional, just for those of you that might be into that.